another OBD2 fuel saver. And I, when I get my teeth into a subject, I occasionally just buy a few of the different versions available. And this one is quite stylish. It's actually got a button. You press the button and I'll just shield it so you can see the LEDs. The LEDs are all lit up. They're not very bright. Uh, but it puts on a fairly convincing show of data transfer. You can see a little LED there and it's like blinking LEDs left, right and centre. This is interesting because when you press this button, it does turn it off and it turns it on again. I don't know if that's to save power. Or I'm not really sure why they've got that function. Maybe it's just their extra feature. I've got this hot wired at the moment because uh, this thing almost certainly does not connect to your car's networks. So I just had to connect 12 volts and let's just cut straight to the chase and open it and reverse engineer it and see what treats it has in the store. So as with many of these things, it comes apart quite easily. It has a fair amount of circuitry. Quite a lot of circuitry. Uh, I'm going to guess this is a microcontroller. That looks like a voltage regulator. Uh, what are these transistors for? Right, tell you what. Let's cut straight to the chase and reverse engineer it. Uh, there's nothing in the back. That's the circuitry here. Okay, one moment, please. Regrettable. I have to say, that is one of the most annoying circuits I've reverse engineered recently because... Although the microcontroller is the one that's controlling these little LEDs here as part of a light show, I was expecting the button to be just toggling a pin the microcontroller, but it turns out the button is interfacing with these three transistors here, and the circuitry is just bizarre. It makes me think that perhaps the software in the microcontroller was stolen, and this was their way of adding an extra layer of control over it. I'm not really sure. Uh, quick look at the circuitry. We've got the uh, chassis or chassis connections here, depending on which part of the world you're in. We have the 12 volt connection here, and it does have pins for all three networks, but they're kind of connected to where components could have been, but the components haven't been put in. I've not seen the back of the circuit board. I cannot find, I'm going to cut it out afterwards and take a look at it, uh, but I can't find uh, any obvious connection to these networks in any way, which is not surprising, probably a good thing anyway. But it turns out the transistors here are actually a toggle for the button, uh, which is strange. Uh, we've got a seven, so we've got the power coming in here, it goes to a polarity protection diode, which is unusual, and then a 78L05 regulator, uh, smooth capacitor, or decoupling capacitor is a better description, and then the transistorized switch, and then the microcontroller controlling the little light show. Right, let's take a look at the schematic for this. I shall bring the schematic in. Everything is sliding down here because it's Avalanche Central. Here is the schematic. And this is the bit that took so long to reverse engineer. There's the microcontroller, there's the three LEDs, not much to it. They chose 10k resistors the LEDs, which is very high. I would actually have chosen lower ones, and particularly given it's a microcontroller, and uh, yeah, they could have cut the power down in other ways. It's not terribly power hungry. So there's the uh, 12 volts coming in, there's the diode, there's the voltage regulator with its little decoupling capacitor, and the microcontroller is switched via this MOSFET. There is a 10K resistor going to pin number four in the microcontroller, which suggests it's a PIC12 microcontroller. Could be wrong here, but that is the master clear pinned. It's not uncommon to tie it to the positive rear of the 10K resistor. Here is the circuitry. You've got two NPN transistors and a P-channel MOSFET. The P-channel MOSFET connects to the positive rail, and to actually turn it on, the gate gets pulled down negative. The resistor values, uh, they're horrible little black tiny resistors with that... I couldn't really measure them easily in circuit, so uh, I haven't put values here, but it doesn't really matter anyway because it's terrible. That's okay. So at power up, current flows through this resistor. This took so long to reverse engineer. It flows through this resistor and this resistor and turns this transistor on. This transistor then pulls the gate of the MOSFET down to the zero volt rail, turning the MOSFET on. Um, and it also effectively, because it's pulled to zero volt rail, this resistor is connected to this transistor, so it keeps this transistor turned off. At this point, this capacitor also starts charging positive via 
this uh, resistor array. When you press the button, it discharges the positive capacitor into the positively charged capacitor into the transistor with no limiting resistor there. And it turns this transistor on very briefly, but that resistor, that transistor turns on, it effectively turns this transistor off. Uh, then the MOSFET gets it floats up to the positive rail. And then this transistor is kept turned on by the fact that that's floating at the positive rail via this resistor here. But now, because this transistor is turned off, uh, this capacitor is fully discharged. And next time you press the button, and there's a sort of time delay caused by this capacitor, it now, the capacitor is negatively charged, it turns the transistor off, takes off the, uh, this transistor turns off, and then the current flows turns this transistor on. So it's basically a very simple toggle on, toggle off. Oh, how long did that take to work out? That was horrific. Uh, it took a long time. Uh, so that just leaves the microcontroller and these uh, LEDs doing a little show, and it's pretty good. It's impressive. When you turn it on the power LED lights, uh, then it does a sort of like, I'm communicating quickly, and then finally it get, gets its link, and then it, it every so often it just jitters backwards and forwards. It puts on a good show. But now I need to cut this thing out of the case and uh, look at where these little pads are going because each of the canvas or the K-line uh, and the SAE connections, each of them goes to a resistor position. And I'm wondering if it was originally designed to monitor those for activity. Uh, let's brighten the picture up on this because that would be nicer. Yes, I should have done that sooner, but I didn't. Right, tell you what, give me one moment. I'm just going to cut these off and we'll take a look. One moment, please. And it turns out that the charade continues. If you follow the tracks from the network connection, see how we've got, say for instance, we've got can high goes via this resistor position and then it goes through a plated through hole. The plated through hole does go to a track on the back that then goes underneath this switch. So I thought, well, does it do anything once it goes underneath the switch? It's worth mentioning the SAE connections uh, aren't connected at all. They just go to this, these resistor positions for no obvious reason. One to ground, one to, I guess it's to make it look like the circuitry. Uh, these positions here don't even make sense. <coughs> That's just ridiculous. It's like plated through holes leading nowhere. Um, but they've got plated through holes from the other connections uh, going underneath the switch. The K-line, incidentally, is the ISO 15... Uh, no, the ISO 9141 K-line. It's a, a different network. But they go underneath uh, here, disappear through, and they're, I presume they don't expect people like me to take the switch off to see where they go because I couldn't find any continuity. And the pads come through and they just disappear. They're just plated through holes that lead nowhere. So it's just, they're continuing the scam by making it look as though the circuitry is doing something. It's going somewhere. But in reality, it's just it's disappearing into thin air. Marvellous. Fantastic. So at least, it's this, uh, at least with this one, they've made an effort. They've tried to engage in some real fakery. But ultimately, it's it's fake. It's just completely fake. I mean, it's nice. It blinks the lights in a convincing way, like data. And you do get a nice uh, case with it if you want to tap power out of your uh, uh, OBD port, onboard diagnostic port, because there's 12 volts there all the time, so it is useful for stealing power. But once again, this one is completely and utterly fake. <laughs>